Hi everyone, welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Um, so I said in our next video that we were going to be doing the wheels um, and I was going to show you a way of masking the tyres without uh, completely removing the tyres. Um, sorry, masking the wheels with, without completely removing the tyres. Um, unfortunately though, when I started even just on one of the small, the front tyres, um, I found that I wasn't able to get the tyre off the bead myself. I just don't have the tools to be able to do that. And of greater concern was that as soon as I moved, even tried to move the tyre away from the rim, I just I could see that it was heavily rusted inside the uh, inside the rim. So uh, unfortunately, I've had to send them off to the tyre shop. Um, they're going to remove all the tyres for me. Uh, we'll obviously then check the condition of the tubes, um, and probably I I, I'm, I believe that we're going to have to replace the two front tubes. Uh, but I'm hoping the two back ones are fine. Um, the chap that I bought the tractor from said that, and I know that he did, um, uh, um, fit brand new rear tyres, so I'm, I'm confident that those are going to be fine. But certainly the front ones, I'm going to have to clean those up um, with a with a wire wheel and um, get them, you know, get rid of that rust, put some rust converter on, etc. Um, and then and then move ahead and actually paint the the rooms um, before it goes back to the tire shop uh, for them to to refit the tires for me so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you that that method um, but if you're interested in it uh, have a look at Vast Grip Garage um, I'll see if I can find a particular video but many of his videos he actually shows you this method of essentially taking for a normal size tire you take a garbage bag you know black bin bag um, you you pinch it in the middle um, so that you line up with the tube and then you measure that tube from the center of the wheel to the the circumference of the rim and you cut it off there and what that does is it creates a perfect circle in the plastic bag and you can literally then just lay that on the tire and push it in between the tire and the rim so basically in the bead itself and what that allows you to do, obviously it masks the tire perfectly, um, but it actually allows you to paint right up to the rim, um, right up to the edge of the rim, uh, which, is, um, which is also quite handy. It means that you don't, you know, it gives you a really good finish essentially. Anyway, we're going to have a good finish now. Obviously removing the tires is even better, uh, but obviously a lot more effort. Um, and means that I have to take it to the tire shop and get them involved, etc. But anyway, that's what we've had to do. So, in the meantime, I'm going to carry on with this bonnet. Um, you can see that I've put some filler on it. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer, but I've done a, an initial uh, filling. There's um, I ran out of filler, so just along this bottom edge here, I've still got a little bit more to do there. Um, but until I've got some more, I'm just going to start sanding this and uh, let's see what sort of finish we get. I'm pretty certain I'm going to have to do a second, a second pass with the filler. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd, um, I'd I'd have a go at that today, whilst we're waiting for the wheels to come back. All right, so um, I'm not going to show you the whole process. I'll just I'll just you know show you as, as we progress. So as you can see, what I've done it's a little bit more difficult on the front here because you've got these basically three different, well, four different curves essentially involved there. So that's a little bit more difficult. But for the for the main part, what I've been able to do is um, scrape up to the apex here, and then from that side coming back, and then down the skirt like that. Um, and that's given me a reasonable fill. And then as I say down here, this is where I kind of ran out. So I still need to do this this front section here. But the other side is um, is done, as you can see, all the way along. And then, um, obviously, I'm going to have to take a look at this particular this edge here and see what I can do, if anything. I might. Um, well, we'll see how we'll see what the finish is once we start sanding. But yeah, this is going to take a little bit more sanding. Um, not not too bad, but um, I try to keep it as thin as possible to minimise the amount of sanding that we need to do. I don't want to go to town on this. Um, I just really wanted to fill all these pittings and you can see you know there are many um, 
it, it was it was quite bad. But um, anyway, I'm think I'm hoping that that's going to give us a reasonable finish. So I'm going to get to sanding a little bit, and um, I'll I'll come back uh, once we've made some progress. Quick update. Firstly, on the bonnet. So I've done the first uh, sanding, and I've now refilled in a few spots. You can see where I've marked and then refilled. There's a few bits where it needed a little bit more of a covering. But that is um, that's coming on nicely now. I'm actually really pleased with how that's coming out. It's exactly kind of the finish that I was looking for. So yeah, um, getting on with that. I'm literally only going to do to here yeah, to this line. I'm not going to do the the, the faces. Um, they're actually not that bad. There's a little bit of what looks like orange peel effect on them, but they're not heavily corroded. So I'm going to stick with that because the rest of the tractor is quite rough. And what I don't want is for the bonnet to look out of place. Uh, same with the mud guards. I'm going to do. I'm going to be filling them, but I don't want them to be perfect because I think it'll be. Uh, you know very different to the rest of the tractor, but it feels to me like that at least this you near know, the top of the bonnet Should be you know, it should have a nice finish on it. And that's that's effectively what I'm going for In another update the wheels so When uh, we took I took into the tractor sorry to the uh, tire place yesterday they Popped the tires off and what we found was that the um, the rims were heavily corroded on the inside um, this one is newer, as is one of the, I think it's this, this front one. So these two have been replaced at some point quite recently, as in they're actually in really good shape. But you can see down on the rim, coming a bit closer, you can still see the, the effect of the corrosion there. Whereas that one and that one, were obviously a lot older, probably the originals, and really, really bad um, condition. Now this one probably needs replacing at some point. Um, when they took the tire off, you can see how they really struggled um, and how this ridge has now become quite buckled. Um, and they did call me to say, do you want me to carry on kind of thing. Um, but I figured, look, let's get the tires off, let's take a look at them and, and work out where we go from there. Now, in the end, this here has now cracked. Um, so they did actually manage to, or the metal did give there in, on the machine. And we have a pinhole over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be welding that closed. I'm going to be welding this up, straightening it, and then welding it on both sides grinding it nice and flat and um, not the whole thing just this section just to re-strengthen that um, and yeah we're gonna we're gonna have a go and get try and get the tire back on i'm going to be straightening this this ledge all the way around as best i can uh, with a hammer and dolly which i might show you a little bit of how how we do that you can see here as well quite um quite buckled from essentially from the machine uh, removing the tire so yeah I'm hoping I can get those get those straightened out but given the state of them they recommended that uh, somebody close by who would basically shot blast them for me so I popped them over there this morning um, and to have literally just got back from fetching them um, he's shot blasted them all they're completely stripped now Obviously, we want to get some paint on them quickly before they flash rust. Uh, so that's my priority for this afternoon. At least to get the primer on and then get uh, the top coats on. Uh, if not tonight, then certainly tomorrow. Uh, and then get them back to the tire place for the tires to be put back on. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to put new tubes in, but we're going to reuse all four tires. Um, all the, the, the rear tires are new and the front ones, although they're old and perished, the fact that we're running tubes and if we put new tubes in we're um we're confident that they're going to be okay so um so yeah so that's where we are with the wheels um hoping to get those back on the tractor but hopefully tomorrow afternoon and get the tractor wheeled out um and um 
have it ready to be put up on the trailer uh, ready for the show on well we've got to we've got to take it to the to the field on Friday afternoon so we're up against it it's Tuesday morning sorry Tuesday afternoon right now so just a couple days to go and um, I still want to try and get the bonnet finished I think that that will be finished and that will be painted so that can go back on the tractor and I'd really quite like to have the the uh, the mud guards um, finished as well now this one we haven't moved forward with it yet I um, obviously have been prioritizing the wheels and the bonnet um, because I think that those are certainly the wheels are far more important and um, we need to get those on the, to the tractor but hopefully we'll have the mud guards on the seat will be painted by then um, and the bonnet will be painted the wheels will be painted so they can all go back on and it will look almost like a tractor uh, for for the show but obviously not um, not much else anyway so that's where we are I'm going to crack on with these wheels I will um, show you a little bit of progress as we go but um, I really just need to get on now so I won't be filming the whole thing okay as promised I'll um, I'll just quickly show you um, just straightening this ridge or this rim I'm not going to film a lot of it because it's obviously very noisy and it's not going to be very comfortable but just wanted to show you this little piece over here. I'm going to zoom in, show you what it looks like now. I'll quickly show you how I uh, hammer, uh, hammer that out with a, basically a hammer and dolly. Um, hopefully, try and get that a little bit, a little bit more round, a bit smoother there. I've done pretty much the rest of it. I've also just ground there where I need to weld. Just ground that just quickly on one side so far with the um, with the air die grinder. Um, just ready to weld there but before I do that I thought I'd just quickly show you this piece here so let me I'll just uh, set the camera up better and then uh, I'll film that a little bit for you okay let's get my bearings on the camera here just give me a second right so you can see here hopefully you can see that little buckle there so it's sticking out a little bit here and it kind of goes in there and there so what we're going to do first is we'll put the the um, dolly against that on the inside and we'll just hammer this in from the outside to start with So hopefully you can see that bit there now is a little bit more round but we've got it going in there so now I don't have a dolly that has this profile but what you can do is if you hold it like that and hits on the inside it works the same basically so hopefully you can see that's a little bit better there this one's sticking out a bit here so we'll just bring that in again So that's looking a lot better already. Just a couple of smacks uh, with a, with a hammer and dolly. We've got a little bit here where it's laying flat. We want to bring it up and curl it up a little bit. So we'll just do that. Okay. So this whole section here yeah, now is looking pretty good. Obviously, I've done a little bit already. Uh, but this whole section, hopefully you can see this on the camera. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up as well, but as you can see with the naked eye. But that's looking a lot better. That's basically the process. So I'm just going all the way around and straightening it up. You've got to go around three or four times. You can't just do it once and think you're done. Because the second time you come and have a look, you'll find other small imperfections that you want to, that you want to deal with. The interesting thing with this rim, if I, if I look at this flat face here, it can't, that in itself is deformed in places. There's not much I can do about that. It kind of dips in over here. There's actually a groove here. There's nothing I can do about that, I don't think, without reshaping the whole wheel, which I don't have the means to do. But hopefully it's going to be good enough. The main thing I'm trying to do, or you know, that I feel is important, is to have a nice round surface here that the that the tire machine can actually run on in order to fold the, the, the tire back into the bead. 
I'm less concerned about it forming a good strong bead because of course it's got a tube in it. But what you do want is you want this to be able to, the tire to be able to hold on here. And most importantly, you want the tire machine to be able to do, to fold the tire on without deforming the rim uh, too much. So anyway, so that's where we are there. Uh, let me show you the other side here where I'm going to weld. So I think you can see here, I've cleaned this up. This is where the, the little pinhole is. So the pinhole is there, I've cleaned that up. I've only done this side, I will have to turn it over to do the other side. I've done this side, just cleaned it up. I'm gonna just weld in there just to fill this in a little bit. And then here, I've actually straightened this out. So this was actually lipped over. Sorry, can you see that? I'm not sure you can actually, hang on. So here, this was actually lipped over and it was bent down. So by straightening this out, that's actually pulled these open a little bit. There's still a small overlap, but the weld's gonna cover that, and actually that gives us a good um, purchase, basically, for the weld. Um, there's a bit of a hole there. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to fill that without burning and making that bigger, but I'm just gonna go slow and steady and uh, hopefully fill that in with, with a good weld. Now again, we're gonna do this side, and then we'll flip it over, and we're gonna do the other side. This needs a little bit more cleaning up, I can't quite get the dark grinder in here. I'm going to have to try and do it with a wire wheel um, or something like that to try and get in there. But um, yeah, so that's the next job. I'm going to weld this up and uh, then flip it over and weld the other side and see how we get on. I'll come back once I've made progress. Well, this is where we got to. That, the, that was the pinhole. Um, as you can imagine, as soon as I started welding, I landed up chasing it all the way around, and in the end, I had to put, I had to add some metal in. Um, basically, a piece of flat bar which I cut to shape, cut to size, and uh, welded in there, and then ground it down. Um, you can see the edge is still, you know, it's not perfect. It's got, um, well, it's a bit rough. I'm going to see if I can grind that a little bit more, but um, yeah. So that was the pinhole. And this was the, let's call it the split. Um, that wasn't too bad actually, that, that welded up reasonably well. Again, I've only done the top, I now need to move to the bottom. And um, yeah, as in flip this over and, uh, and do the other side. But I think that's gonna be mostly grinding, hopefully not too much welding. But um, yeah, I'm afraid this, this room is actually, I would say reasonably rotten. Um, and I think what, I'm, what I've decided is I'm going to do the best I can at this point, primarily just to get, uh, get things moving or keep things moving along. Um, but then I'm probably going to look for an, a replacement for this particular one. Anyway, that's where we are. I'm going to flip it over now, do the other side. Then we need to give us a good clean because, of course, it's now covered in dust and um, splatter from the, from the welder. I need to clean all that up and then we can prepare for paint. Okay, we're making good progress here. So this is what the backside looks like now that it's been cleaned up. I did have to do a little bit of welding here just to um, to firm this up a little bit. It's not perfect. Um, obviously, it could be a lot better, but I mean, look at the rest of the wheel, right? So it's, um, it's smoother than the, than the rest of the room. So yeah, I think that that's gonna do. This is, the, um, this is where the split was. So again, uh, just had to tie that in there. You can just see that extra weld I put in there, uh, just to tie in the, the back of the what was the slit or the cut. Anyway, that's now nice and smooth. I can run my fingers over there, no problem. Same with the other. Uh, I'm pretty much done now with the welding and fixing, but as you can see, now the rim does need a little bit of uh, more panel beating. So I'm gonna quickly do that. On this one, I'm then going to check the other one and the two front ones. And once that's done, I'm going to start. Uh, well, I need to give them a quick rough sand uh, just to um, take any any um, sort of bumps or from the set, from the shot blasting. But um, yeah, that's starting to look um, well. I'm happy with, happier with this one now. I think um, I think this will work. Hopefully, they'll be able to get the tire on and um, it will work for you know as a show tractor i wouldn't um, use this like this with for any serious work maybe a little bit of 
paddock mowing and that sort of thing but yeah I think this room is ultimately going to have to be replaced so yeah anyway so that's it I'm going to lay down uh, get this ready and then lay down some paint okay got them all laid out I'm going to have to paint them here in the workshop because obviously the tractor is still in the uh, spray booth and I can't get it out without the wheels on so I'm going to have to do it in here um, yeah it's um, what I've all I've done now I've just given a very very light sanding with the hands you know by hand just to um, rough up the surface but more importantly just to make sure that I've got anything that any loose stuff off um, this one you can see had little spots of rust already um, guess coming home it must have got wet um, on the trailer but anyway that's um, the, 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 the red oxide will deal with that so yeah first coat be red oxide uh, we'll probably do three coats in total and um, that'll be probably it for tonight and then tomorrow I hope to get the bonnet finished uh, as in sanded and ready for a uh, top coat and then I'll do the bonnet and all the wheels at the same time and um, yeah then we can get on to moving the tractor out of the uh, spray booth hi everyone it's uh, it's actually the next morning now I um, I ran out of red oxide paint last night so I had to rush off this morning get some more and um, I have now just finished the on the rear wheels it's the essentially the 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 one side is done as in I need to flip them over and do the other side but all the coats on this side are done now and um, you can see it's still still drying still a couple of wet, wet spots there but yeah those are those are coming out quite nice this is the better room um, the newer one and um, it is it's getting getting a much nicer finish on that one um, this is the older one and um, I mean it's getting a good finish but the actual surface is obviously very corroded so yeah but we're getting there um, that's now hopefully drying or will we'll dry in the next hour or so and then I can flip them over the front wheels I've done this is now the other side um, so the other side the, the first side had all the coats this is the first coat on the front essentially um, or the outside of the wheels and you can see that's um, that's just beginning to bake off um, so yeah just almost ready for for the next coat I'm using this big extractor fan uh, in here obviously we're having to work in the workshop because the temporary spray booth is occupied at the moment and I certainly don't want to get red oxide all over the uh, newly painted tractor so yeah um, using that big extractor and that seems to be keeping the overspray down I'm still wearing my PPE of course but um, I'm not seeing a huge amount of overspray in the rest of the workshop so that's good um, I am keeping the the air pressure down a little bit um, and also just putting very thin coats on so not a not a huge amount of material I've adjusted the gun so there's not a huge amount of material coming out as in paint but uh, and then lowered the, the the level of the air pressure so that reduces on the amount of atomization um, but still gives you a reasonable coverage so it's just finding that right balance basically but yeah these are these are baking up nicely so you can see the fan I'm going to switch it back on now um, but you can see it's picking up all the overspray pretty well um, so I'm pleased about that um, so anyway yeah carrying on um, I will come back when we're done okay we're moving along um, time for the final coat on this side you can see I've just scuffed them a little bit with um, sandpaper because this is the outside of the wheels I wanted these to be a little bit smoother um, they're not going to be perfect of course but I thought I'd give them a bit of a scuff um, just to smooth them off a bit um, this one a bit more than the others and then the bonnet I have finished sanding it um, again it's not perfect there are imperfections in it um, hopefully you can see this 
and um, but yeah considering how the rest of the tractor looks um, if this was like a mirror finish then that wouldn't be uh, in keeping so um, yeah quite a few imperfections here hopefully that's focus it's difficult to see on the small screen but anyway so the um, the bonnet has had now its uh, first initial sort of dusting coat and then the the second coat so the intermediate coat time for the final one same with the wheels and then we will be moving once those are all dry then we'll be moving to the to the final top coat uh, which is quite exciting looking forward to um, getting these finished yep so I'll come back when that's all done well as you can see I've um, moved along quite a bit this is I've done um, the gray now the top coat on one whole side so three coats on one side and then I've just turned these over well these ones I've stood up and um, I did manage to do one coat on the back side before the paint ran out that I had uh, on the big rooms I've done the other side completely flipped them over and I'm just about to do this side and then you can see the bonnet is now uh, at least the outside of the bonnet is done at some point we'll need to do the inside but we won't do that not for the show uh, for the show we're just going to do this outside just like it is essentially and that that bonnet is now done I'm just waiting for it to dry essentially um, I have also done just very quickly did the seat which is down here because um, that's quick and easy to bolt on I've got to flip that over and do do the backside but the priority right now is the wheels I've got to get them finished tonight um, so that I can get them back to the tire shop tomorrow um, and get the tires refitted so that we uh, we can move forward uh, with that and have the tractor at least rolling ready to go onto the trailer so yeah up against it a little bit um, cracking on I'm not filming quite as much uh, obviously because I really just need to get on um, the garage is now uh, sorry the workshop is now kind of covered in overspray you can see especially the red oxide that seems to have um, powdered up quite a lot more than I than I expected but anyway It'll all clean off eventually, I'm sure. But um, yeah, so that's where we are. I'm going to crack on, finish these, finish these wheels tonight, and um, hopefully they'll dry overnight and uh, be ready for the tires tomorrow. That's where we are. Well, the tires are back from the tire shop. Tires uh, fitted onto the rims. A couple of little bits of damage. Um, paint has been scuffed. This was me last night when I turned the room over. I put it down on a piece of wood and it wasn't um, quite dry. But you can see here as well, a couple of little scuffs. But all in all, um, not bad, not horrendous. Um, we'll just touch those up with a paintbrush and um, just get those sorted. And then you've got the front ones here. Obviously, the other real ones at the bottom. but. Front ones came out real good, actually. I'm quite pleased with those. We'll get these uh, get these off the trailer and get them fitted quickly, and uh, we can get the tractor out of the spray booth. Well, there she is, out of the spray booth, back on the wheels. We've uh, put the bonnet on as well. I've um, I'm just waiting for the dash to dry and then that will go in here and then the bonnet will close down onto that it rests on top of that but yeah it's um i've got the seat and the dash components here just waiting for them to dry and then they can go on and that'll be pretty much it in terms of what we're aiming for for the show uh, that's as far as we we're going to go for uh, in terms of the, getting it ready of course then tomorrow we're going to load it up onto the trailer and it'll stay on the trailer at the show we're not intending to take it off um, just wanted it to be there to demonstrate the work that we're doing and the progress that we've made um, but yeah hopefully 
everybody will enjoy it. It's, um, there's a couple of little bits you can see here where the tape masked a little bit more than I would have liked. Um, that was a very, very difficult piece to mask, so not surprised really. Um, and then there's a couple of other little bits. This got um, a bit of damage when we put the bonnet on, so that needs touching up. Just a few little bits and pieces that that need doing, but not surprising. I've got um, I've actually got paint in the gun at the moment, just waiting for those bits to that coat to dry, so I can turn them over the the um, the dash and the seat, and then I'm going to spray the other side. So I think when I'm doing that, I'll probably just do a couple of bits of touch up on here. But um, look, that's it. Uh, so in terms of this video, in terms of painting, getting ready for the show, that's um, pretty much it. The wheels are done. I'm actually really happy with them. Obviously, it would have been nice to have brand new tires, but that um, I'm afraid the budget doesn't stretch to that. And I mean, these back tires have never been on the road. Well, they've never been used. Frankly, they were they were new when we bought the tractor, and they basically the tractor's just been standing on them ever since. They haven't actually been used uh, at all, other than the little drive that we did around the or down the drive um, when when we fired the tractor up. But um, yeah, the front ones. Yeah, I mean, they like I said, they're a little bit perished, showing the age. But with brand new tubes and uh, they're going to be absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, look, I think that's it for this video. I'm going to finish it off there. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Lots and lots of work, lots of late hours, uh, but we're there now for the most part. And um, we'll get to the show, we'll get the show done. And then we um, we can move on with the mud guard, which is still lying down here. Get that fixed, repaired, and then fill that one and the other one. Put a bit of filler on them and then paint them up. You can see how the bonnet turned out. Um, I think I did show you earlier, but uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Like I said, it's not perfect. I wasn't aiming for perfect because, again, it wouldn't um, be in, in keeping with the rest of the tractor. But what I did want was a little bit of a smooth surface that, you know, just to show it off essentially. And uh, that, I think, is what I've managed to achieve. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, camera's not focusing, but yeah, there you go. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have a great week. And uh, see you on the next one. Cheers for now.